Welcome back to the highly anticipated final part of this tutorial series. We've come a long way and now we're reaching the grand finale. In today's video, we're focusing on creating a captivating scene, setting up lights, assigning materials and showcasing the power of rendering with Arnold. Please note that during the rendering process, there might be some unexpected cuts due to the possibility of 3ds Max crashing while recording. Rest assured, I'll exercise caution to minimize any interruptions. Before we dive in, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude for your unwavering support and commitment throughout this mini course. I truly hope it has been a valuable learning experience for you. So without any further ado, let's dive into the final chapter and create something truly extraordinary together. Let's get started. First of all, we need to make sure that Arnold renderer is selected. In order to do so, click on this icon right here or press F10 on your keyboard and under renderer make sure that Arnold is selected. If by any chance any other renderer is assigned, go ahead and change that to Arnold for the sake of this tutorial and then you can close this window. Then we can proceed to make a new layer and name that layer scene and make sure that the same layer is active. And then we are going to create a box which is going to be in dimensions in about uh, 300 in length, 700 centimeters in width and 300 centimeters in height. So we have 3 by 7 by 3 meters, something of a room shall we call it. So this is going to be our scene now and we're going to convert this box to editable poly then we're going to go into the polygon selection and select this front polygon and we are going to delete it and now we had some kind of a room actually and we're going to select all the polygons and we're going to flip it so we have the inside out now this is basically our scene for now right so you can see it's inverted and in the middle we have the toilet. Now I'm just going to set the viewports so I can clearly see uh, down the road. You see I'm making them from the top, the front and from the left side. And now I'm going to need the perspective viewport and I'm going to maximize it. So this viewport will act as a camera now. So we're going to select everything so we can easily rotate around these objects. We will position to our liking, so something like this maybe. Then we are going to make sure that the default layer is active. And we are going to press Ctrl C to add a camera from this view. So now if we go into the uh, default layer we can see that we have a camera and camera target created so we're going to put them in new layer and we are going to name that layer camera when we select the physical camera in the modify panel right here we have a lot of settings of course and we're just going to tweak a couple of settings so let's go ahead and select the preset of a 35 millimeter and then we're going to turn off specify FOV so we can adjust the focal length and set the focal length to 50 millimeters. So basically the camera viewport works as a regular viewport but uh, only the panning will be with the middle mouse button and uh, if you want to zoom in let's say for example you need to get dolly camera tool and then while holding alt you will drag up and down with the tool you see because if you don't hold alt it will go crazy it will go faster like this so just go ahead and set the uh, actually this is the focal length but because we've turned off specify fov we are going to keep the focal length and we are just going to zoom in and out so i think that this is good for now maybe down the road we will still tweak the camera settings but for now we will leave them as it is so now we can go ahead and assign materials so go ahead and open the material editor and now we are going to go into 
the general tab right here so let's just quickly disable this checker let's just delete that and go into general and pull out three physical materials So the first physical material that we've created, we are going to assign that to the toilet bowl. So we're just going to rename this T bowl. And then we are going to assign the second material to the plastic parts. So just go ahead and rename it T plastic. And then we are going to assign this to the handle. So just rename it T handle. Now we are ready to set the presets. So go ahead and take the T-ball material. And then we are going to go down in the presets right here. And we are going to select glazed ceramic. So click on that. Just check that you have a clear code of one. That's very important. Then we are going to go ahead and change the color to uh, just type in this number so 0.8 on the three uh, red green and blue parameters so we have a bit of whiter color in, oppos in opposing to the gray that we already had from the material itself and then go ahead and click OK so just that we know what preset we've uh, selected we're just going to go ahead and type into brackets glazed ceramic because if we deselect the material and then select it back again the preset will not stay here so just it, it's a clever way to know what preset we are using then go ahead and take the second material and assign glossy plastic go into the coating parameters and here we are going to change a clear coat of 0.5 and then we are going to assign the same numbers so 0.8 on red green and blue parameters and then you can go ahead and click ok so actually we have the same white color that we have into the other preset and then for the handle we are just oh yes uh, let's just go back and uh, type in the glossy plastic in brackets because we use that material so we don't forget down the road like this and then go to the third material to the material for the handle and I think that for this one we will only use polished aluminum and we are not going to tweak it so just go ahead and in brackets type in polished aluminum as I said the polished aluminum material we will use it as is so we're not going to change anything you can go ahead and tweak some things if you like, but I like the I like it like this, so I'm just going to leave it for now. And then we have uh, three materials that we are going to use for our scene, so we can go ahead and assign them. So select the toilet bowl and then select the toilet bowl material and click on this button to assign it. Then select the handle, click on handle material and on this button to assign it. And then proceed the same procedure with the three left plastic parts and assign the plastic material to them. So make sure that show shaded material in viewport is selected so we can see the materials in the viewport. And you can go ahead and close the material editor right now. Now note that the materials because they are white they are not going to show any difference in the viewport. And in order to see the difference we are going to need to go into the active shade renderer for now. So go ahead and I will just render out an example so we can see how the materials look. But note that we don't have any lights in the scene yet. So we're going to need lights and everything. So this is just a quick preview of how, of, uh, how the materials actually will look. So we can see the polished aluminum right here. We can see the clear coating on the plastic. And we are going to get rid of this shading, strange shading that we now have when we add more lights. So don't worry about that. Then we can go ahead and close the 
render window. Now we can go into the active shade mode, so click here and hold and select this with the play button and we now have the active shade. So what the active shades is, is does a real time rendering. So if you, for example, let's say move into the viewport, you will move the render also, etc. Then we are going to set a custom maybe of 640 by 480 resolution so we just have you know a smaller resolution would be better for starting for setting up materials for setting up lights so you don't have to wait out every time but later down the road the road we can uh, change the resolution to even higher resolution so now let's go ahead and make some lights Now we can go into the create panel and right here we can select lights and choose Arnold from the drop down menu, select Arnold light and place a light in the viewport. So I'm just going to just quickly remember that you put it in a separate layer. So make the default layer active and we'll put them right there for now. So go ahead and put a light into the scene and we are going to position that light in the middle of the world so zero 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 on all axis or maybe we are going to make this first a point light so let's let's just move it 90 centimeters on z axis and then 90 centimeters on x axis and let's just set up the uh, set up the camera a bit. Let's just tweak it So now we can go ahead and press uh, shift F in order to show the save frames So we show at uh, the actual resolution of the image that we are going to render out like this And then you can go ahead and set with the dolly tool uh, Set the zoom in zoom in and out or however you want so maybe rotate and we can try out and render with active shape so we can see now that we have a lightning from one side then we can go ahead into the modify panel and select the light we are going to make this light point light right here so choose point light make the radius as it is five centimeters and we are going to change the color to something of a yellowish color so you just go ahead and type the type in the number so i will just leave it out leave out this window so you can retype the numbers like this so i'm just trying out to see the color what i like but we probably are going to go with this one right here so it's not yellow but is some kind of a warmer yellowish light color now go ahead and type in these numbers you can pause the video and we are going to change the intensity but firstly we have to render out a an example scene so we play with the exposure and the intensity and see how the light will react for now we are going to duplicate so uh, select the light hold shift and drag and we are going to set it on the opposite side so minus 90 centimeters on the x-axis and for this light we are going to play with a uh, with bluish color so go ahead and <clears throat> so go ahead and type these uh, numbers right here so feel free to pause the video and retype the numbers so you had the exact same blue color we leave out 
also the, the settings as they are on the other light and we are going to render out for now an active shade preview so we can see how the lights are acting up. For now I think that we have what I was looking for so we have warm uh, yellowish light on the right side and blue cold light from the left side so then we can go ahead and grab these two lights and put them in new layer and we are going to call that layer lights and then we are going to play with the intensity of the lights so I'm just going to go ahead and set the intensity to 2 of both of them lights and I'm going to render out a preview maybe a couple of previews and I will get back to you as quick as I can because 3ds Max tends to crash when sometimes I'm using the active shade renderer. So I went ahead and uh, rendered out two examples which we can see them side by side. So uh, if we take a closer look to the left reference right here to the left image I'm sorry um, right here we can see that we have more lighting going on and this is uh, rendered out with the intensity of 2 on both of the lights and on the right side we have with intensity of 1 so I think that intensity of 2 is going to be better than the intensity of 1 of course that we have more lighting and more we can clear, clearly see more details in the image but uh, these lights are going to be uh, sort of ambient lights and we also have problem with the uh, exposure right here in the back so that's going to be fixed down the road with the material when we assign material to the scene because remember that we don't have uh, assigned materials for now so I'm just going to go ahead and now just try some settings with, uh, with the lighting and I will get back to you in a second. We can now go ahead and close the renders and we still need to add another light source so we are going to add now a sky dome. So go ahead and choose Arnold Light, position it wherever you want or center it in the world maybe and from the list we are going to pick sky dome. A sky dome is a specific type of light source that simulates an environment by projecting a map onto a dome shaped object surrounding the scene. We are now going to set the resolution to 1200 and then we are going to play with the intensity. So I think that uh, 0.5 might be a good intensity right here. But firstly I'm just going to make a couple of renders. So the render on the right is the previous render without Skydom and the left one is with the Skydom on. So we can clearly see a lot of difference. For the Skydom light I've set the intensity to 0.65. So I find that to be uh, the perfect intensity in this case, at least for me. So you can go ahead and experiment with whatever number you want, but don't go ahead and put too high of a number because it, you will get a lot of exposure because this is ambient light and not a direct source. We still have to revisit uh, this light source right here because if we disable the lighting in the scene we will lose the, you know, the specular that we get in the front. So we're not only going to lose that exposure part but we are also going to lose these parts here this lights here so we are going to have to play with the material of the background so we will lose that overexposure part go ahead and close the renders now another thing that I would like to do is to add a chamfer to this hard edge right here so go ahead and select the scene select edge selection and select this edge right here and we are going to apply a chamfer so go ahead and click on chamfer settings then select the quad chamfer um, about the amount we are going to go somewhere around 40 maybe 40 centimeters or maybe 35 let's see how it looks with 35 centimeters and put 
the tension of 0.5 with uh, 10 segments I would say so go ahead and put 10 segments right here and I think that this would look okay for now so click OK and let's just see it without edged faces so I think it looks better now and now we can go ahead and open the material slate editor so we can add a material to the background <coughs> Now, instead of adding a physical material, we will add a standard surface material from the Arnold menu. So you can go, you can see on the left side where the, uh, where it is located. And we are going to pick this color right here. So this color is, I kind of like that color. So I'm just going to go ahead, click here and click on the picker right here and then I'm going to take the color from here so we have the exactly the same color and then we're going to assign that material to the uh, scene box so we're going to change the specular to somewhere around 0.2 so you, you can already see the difference in the viewport and now I am going to render out an active shade um, preview so we can see how it looks. So here we have the preview right now. I think it already looks better. So we still have, uh, we don't have the overexposure now, but we have every other element of the lightning, right? So we fixed that problem. And we still have the specular right here, which I like and I want to keep. <coughs> Overall, we have good lighting for now, at least for the ambiental light that we want to add to our scene. And the next step would be to proceed to add maybe a spotlight. So we'll just see. Let's just uh, quickly preview the scene and we will add another light. So basically now we will add a spotlight, which is going to be a direct light source and it will light directly our toilet. So you can go ahead and just move it around. I'm just thinking about how, it, how I can find the sweet spot. So I'm just going to put it up like this, somewhere around here. And then I'm going to pull it out in the front, maybe right here and maybe even higher. And then if we go into the modify panel under type we can select spotlight or just spot in this case we are going to select targeted then we can take the target and we will set the target in the center of the world so we have direct light onto the model right here so now I think that we will have to adjust it left or right. I would suggest that you set this kind of lighting behind the camera. I'm going to just quickly render out a few examples so we can see what's going on. So as you can now see, I've rendered out three previews, each of them with a different exposure. So this is with exposure of three and intensity of 10. The middle one is with exposure of 4 and the right one is with exposure of 5. So right from the start when I see exposure 3 and exposure 5 I would definitely choose to go with exposure 4 so I'm just going to close those previews and stick with this one. We have good lighting overall but I don't really like this shadow right here so that's why I said that it is clever to move around the lighting source where the camera is. And like that we will lose this shadow right here. Because we have this shadow and a sh the shadow on the other side. So I'm, I'm thinking about disabling maybe this shadow right here or this one we'll see. So there's only shadows on one side. So firstly, I'm going to move the Arnold light and target into the lights 
layer so we have a more organized better organized scene then we are going to think about how to position the light so first I'm going to get Arnold light 1 so that's the right light and I'm going to disable cast shadows from the shadow tab in the modeling panel and then if we render out a preview you will see the difference so on the left side we have the uh, render without the shadows but we still have the light and on the right side we have shadows you can see that I think that this looks better now because I would like the model to have uh, shadows only on one side and not shadows everywhere in the render so I'm just going to disable cast shadows for this light and then we are going to move the spotlight so just select the last light that we've made and let's just uncover the camera quickly we're going to position the light somewhere behind the camera something like this and now we will again render out a preview so we can see what's going on so I'll be back in a second so guys this is the render that we've got which I like a lot more than I liked the renders before and I'm, I think that I'm going to stick with it now of course it's not perfect right here we get a bit of uh, too much of exposure but I think that this will do for now so I'm going to stick with this render definitely just keep note that you can add more lights if you like and also you can add less lights if you like so just you, you can you feel free to play around with the light settings and now we get to the part where we have to actually go into the render settings and set up some settings right here so we can render out a credible actually render so we're going to go into Arnold render and settings and we are going to turn off the preview AA because we don't want those boxes to just uh, appear we want them we want the render to be black at start and then uh, clear the render box by box now we are going to change some of these settings so we can get a clear and more advanced render so go ahead and change camera to five samples then we are going to up the diffuse samples also to three samples the specular to three samples and we are going to apply subsurface scattering of five samples because we have some sort of a ceramic or marble material and we are going to up the volume indirect to three then we can also set the diffuse and specular ray depth on two So now we can go ahead and go into the common settings and we are going to set the um, resolution. So I'm just checking out if I have any preset already done that I would like. But I think I'm going to go with the custom setting after all. depending on the scene that you have I'm just going to go on custom so you can go ahead here and lock the image aspect ratio so when you change the uh, width of the resolution it will also change the height I will set a width of 1200 and it will automatically set the height for the resolution and so we now have the final settings I'm just going to go ahead and fix the scene so I'm just going to hide the lights let's just uncover all them and just hide the layer it's easier that way we are also going to hide the camera so it doesn't go anywhere in the way and we are going to leave the scene and the toilet geometry visible and then we are going to select uh, the geometry of the toilet and we are going to apply a turbo smooth modifier now 
So just go into the modifier list and search for Turbo Smooth and apply it. I would go far as maximum of two iterations. We wouldn't need anything above that. And after this, we are ready to render out our final render. So I'm just going to cut now to the final render and we'll see what we have. So this is the last render that I've rendered out with the settings that I've showed you before. It took about 3 minutes to render out, which I think that it is too much time to render this kind of image. So if we go and revisit the settings, we can clearly see that we've upped too much settings for this kind of render. I think that maybe we could cut on the ray depth samples for diffuse and specular, but overall this render turned out to be perfect, so we don't have any strange artifacts, we have good shading, we have a bit of overexposure that I don't like right here, but that could be easily fixed with uh, tweaking the spotlight. We also have everything that I liked about these specular reflections right here, and we've lost the specular reflections in the uh, background, so overall I think that this is very good render. You can go ahead and still play with the settings right here. So just change the ray depth to one, uh, ray depth of diffuse and specular to one. And then maybe we could go into the common settings again, into the output size and change the resolution settings. But I truly like these settings. So I would go uh, as far as maybe 1500, something like that but I wouldn't go further so because we're not rendering out for something big like uh, maybe billboard or something we're just going to stick with 1200.900 so that's a good render size and believe it or not this is finally it so after this I would say that you can go ahead and feel free to put this render into your portfolio you can do whatever you want with it. If you are going to include this image into your portfolio, uh, make sure that you take a few screenshots from the wireframe also, from the viewport, and um, make sure that you always have true and simple topology for this kind of objects, so you can put TurboSmooth modifier and you still yet have a good uh, low poly version of the model. Now we are getting to the end, so I will just jump quickly and show you a few renders that I've made of the toilet and I will do the outro then. Thank you for your continuous support throughout this mini course. I truly hope that you found this tutorial to be incredibly helpful and informative. Your questions, suggestions and comments are highly appreciated, so please don't hesitate to share them down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed this mini course, please show your appreciation by giving the videos a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you once again for joining me on this learning journey and I look forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos. Take care, bye bye.